Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're out here to shoot the Strike One pistol. But Mac, we've talked about the Strike One pistol. It's no longer made, exactly. But this handgun was really kind of interesting when it first hit the market several years ago. This one was made in Italy. It was rumored to have been also manufactured in Russia. Certain Russian special operations units were rumored to have it. All this mystique revolved around this handgun. Then it went away. It dropped off the market. They were really expensive. They became somewhat affordable on some of the discount sites, and then they just disappeared. But then there was another company that was producing what was called then the Strike A and Strike B, and then everybody got all excited about the Strike A and Strike B. I even did a video about the early production guns or pre-production guns. But there's been so many different companies involved. It, you know, originally Prime was involved, and then you had um, all these different groups, Salient, all these different groups involved with it. And finally, we now have the Archon pistol, the Strike A, Strike B gone. Now we have the Archon pistol. It's on the market. It's available right now, and it's based on this Strike pistol, the Strike 1, the original design. So we're going to fire off 15 rounds of the original design. Then let's jump into the Archon and talk about what that pistol brings to market. And then in future videos, we're going to compare it to some pretty well-established handguns like the Glock 19 and pistols like that. Is it truly a revolutionary handgun? Does it truly bring something to market that no other pistol does? Stick around, we'll talk about that. Man, this is a sweet shooting handgun. Let's take a look at the Archon. So here it is guys, this is the Archon Type B. It's a Glock 19 size pistol, so presumably the Type A will be a full size pistol, much like the original Strike 1. When you open up the cardboard box on the inside, you're going to find a nylon case. Nylon case looks to be of good quality, has a weather sealed zipper system on it, so make a nice little range bag. On the inside, you're going to find three spare magazines, one in the gun itself, a lock, a uh, silver sharpie for some reason, the pistol, which we'll go ahead and show you is empty, and another magazine in it. So you have four magazines total, which is nice because the, uh, the gun is not inexpensive with a MSRP and map of 850 bucks. It does also come with this EZX gun care. And we went ahead and lubricated the gun up with the oil that it came with just because it came with it. And we figured, what the heck? So. Here it is, guys, the Archon Type B. Now, you'll notice it looks very similar to the original Strike 1. Internally, it's extremely similar. Uh, the locking system, everything about it is identical to a Strike 1. They've made some uh, improvements throughout the handgun that we'll talk about a little bit later in the video, but let's go ahead and load the gun up and do a little bit of shooting with it. So some of the ammunition we brought out today is Simtex, and this stuff is, let's see, 124 grain, and this is range-safe ammunition. And then we also have some Fiocchi 124 grain. So we have two 124 grain loads. We have been shooting the gun this morning with some Browning 115 grain loads as well. And uh, I'll just be honest with you guys, we were having some light primer strikes with the Fiocchi. We get this ammunition from our friends over at LAX Ammunition. We do have a discount code down below in the description. If you use that code, it's good store wide. It's just a thank you to you guys. They supply ammunition to us here at the channel, but we get no financial kickbacks from the sale of ammunition. So using that code doesn't result in extra money for us. We take no money from LAX Ammunition. But anyway, so let's go ahead and load up some of the Simtex. And we had no issues with the Browning 115 grain. Probably about once per magazine, we were having problems with the uh, Fiocchi, which is a bit concerning because we use Fiocchi ammunition quite a bit here at the channel. And as you can tell, the Simtex stuff has that signature red bullet. And this will be our first magazine 
of the Federal. And I'm hoping that the light primer strikes, I mean, maybe I got some oil in the striker channel. I don't, I didn't lubricate the striker channel, but uh, anything could happen. Let's go ahead and see how she works with the uh, Simtech ammo. Okay, yeah, no light primer strikes there. We'll take a look at some of the spent cases, but the gun shoots very, very flat. That's one thing I like about it. You'll notice also that you have a step down cut here. You have very sharp serrations front and rear. Allows you to run the action that way if you're so inclined, and a lot of people don't like that anymore, but you still have sharp serrations back here. So whatever your preference is on manipulating the slide, you have quite a few options. Gun, just like the Strike One, sets nice and low in the hand. This one has sights that are compatible with Glock sights. So if you want to put different sights on the handgun, pick up any Glock sight that's on the market, you'll be able to drop them right onto uh, your Archon pistol. It has uh, aggressive checkering, but it's not like the P10C, which is, in my opinion, just maybe a little bit overly aggressive. This is nice and uh, grippy. You will notice that you have this little indentation that sticks out, and this is the same with the Strike One. And what it's said to do is, upon recoil, it comes back and hits the tendon within your hand and forces your hand to tighten its grip. Presumably, it helps control recoil. Whether it works or not, I can't really say. You'll notice you have a nice flat trigger here. The trigger is an inertial safety trigger, so you can see that it moves back. That disengages the safety, then you can move back and engage the striker. So it works much like a Glock trigger, just without the dingus. So it should be drop safe. Have 1913 rails up here. And you have no slide stop on the right-hand side, but you do have a slide stop slide release on the left-hand side, and the magazine release is reversible. It's kind of cool how you do that. We'll show you how to do that here in a minute. All right, so let's load up some more ammunition and just see how the Simtex works. Now, we weren't able to get through two full magazines of the Fiocchi without having at least one primer strike that was uh, too light to set the, the round off. I'm sorry I'm sniffling, guys. We're in that season here where uh, my allergies are kicking in. All right, 15 rounds now. Uh, we will test it with the 17 round magazines of the original Strike One, but it said that they work. And another 15 rounds of the Federal Ammunition. Okay, no light primer strikes there. So we weren't able to do that with the Fiocchi. We couldn't get through two magazines without having at least one failure. We'll finish off the box here. So maybe it just needs a slightly more aggressive striker spring perhaps. And it may not do it with all ammunition. It's hard to say. But like I said, it uh, was a bit concerning for us Let's see if we can recover one of these spent cases and take a look at the primer signature. But notice how flat shooting the handgun is. Has a very, very short reset and it's just nice clean break. It's two stage trigger. You can feel it come back, hit a shelf and breaks. And it just, just it's a really, really nice shooting handgun just like the Strike One before it. Okay, yep, so it's, it's running the Federal just fine. No failures to feed. Five rounds in an entire box. Before I say that, let's go ahead and load the last five rounds. Look how bright red those bullets are. It's kind of cool. They don't trace. All right, it's shooting the Federal just fine. No light primer strikes. You'll notice here that you have some texturing right here, so when you're holding the pistol, my thumb falls perfectly right there, my syndex point. And if you're a press checker, very easy to do. Overall, the ergonomics and the controls of the pistol are spot on, but they're very, very similar, again, to the Strike One, which it's derived from, so it's not surprising. So we're gonna continue shooting. We're trying to get through three or 400 rounds this afternoon and document any failures that we have. We only have ball ammunition. We'll do more extensive testing as time goes on. But, um, yep, so far the only failures we've had is with the Fiocchi and the light primer strikes.
Let's field strip the Archon Type B and see what it looks like on the inside. First, you're going to drop the magazine out using the magazine release, push up on the slide stop, and check to make sure that the chamber is empty. Once you're sure the chamber is empty, go ahead and let that slide come forward. And now you're going to slightly pull the slide to the rear, and there's a little button right here you're going to push. You push on that button, and then you can pull the pin out from the other side. The pin is captive, just like the original Strike One pistol. Once that happens, release the striker, point the gun in a safe direction. Get the pin all the way out, and then it will come apart. I just didn't have the pin all the way out. Now internally, guys, this is a very simple handgun, but looking at the mechanism, it's pretty much a Strike One, very much modernized. So look how simple this is. Now what's also interesting to point out, guys, is even though the polymer is serial numbered right here on the pick rail, this is a modular handgun. Now I didn't know this until just now. This chassis system is also serialized, just not in view, and can be removed, and there will be other polymer chassis available for this. So if you want to try your own stipple job or whatever and you screw it up, just like the SIG P320, you will be able to replace this lower. All right, we'll set that aside. Here we have nested recoil springs. They're progressive. There's three nested recoil springs. You want to be, want to be careful when you pull it out because it is not captive. That final large spring is not captive. Set that aside. Now you have your locking block. The locking block has a flat surface on one side and kind of rounded on the other. You're going to want to put it back together with the flat surface over here so it interfaces with the back side of the recoil spring. Pull this locking piece out. Again, this is very similar to the Strike 1 pistol. And now you can push your barrel forward and then just kind of draw it out much like a browning action, although it is not a browning action. So there's your full field strip of the gun. Very simple. To put it back together, reverse the process. Drop the barrel in. Make sure that the barrel is all the way to the rear. Take your locking piece, putting the flat face forward. Drop that down inside. It snaps right in. Be very careful. Put your recoil spring in. Make sure it doesn't go flying. Don't point it at your eyes or anything. And set it in position. You will notice that it has very long, fine rails. Line the rails up between the slide and the frame. Pull it to the rear. Now you're going to want to look through the hole here and make sure the pin's lining up. And when the pin lines up, just push on it, pull the slide back rear slightly, and that pin will pop all the way through. And the pistol is now reassembled. Very, very simple. And if we take apart the original Strike One, you're going to find it's very similar. Okay, notice that the internals are very similar, just upsized, because this is a full-size pistol where the, the Archon Type B is a compact size pistol. You'll notice the recoil spring is just a double-nested spring, non-captive, same locking piece, and barrel system. So really, this New Archon is a modernized version of the original Strike One, but it has some improved features. So we've loaded up all four factory magazines that came with the gun with some of the Federal ammunition, and now we're gonna check function. We're gonna see if we can get through four magazines without any issues. Then we're gonna switch over to the Pioki and see if we're still having any problems with light primer strikes using that particular ammunition. It's in the lower cargo pocket.
All right, so the Federal works just fine. We're getting the gun nice and hot and no issues. Let's load up the same four magazines with the Fiocchi and see if we still have any of those light primer strikes. And let's see if we can pick up a few spent cases here and take a look at those heads and see what the primers are doing. As we know, the history of the Strike A, Strike B, the original Strike 1, and now the Archon, it's been a bit convoluted with all the companies that have been involved in the production of what is now known as the Archon Type B. This gun is brought to market by Arsenal Firearms. It is manufactured in Deutschland or in Germany. It bears the marks of its German ancestry right here on the slide. So it is a German-made gun. So that's something I thought that would be of interest to point out because originally, uh, you know, the guys over at Salient were to be the manufacturers. I have the 17 round Strike One magazine inserted and we're just gonna fire off some of the Federal ammo. Definitely a flat shooting pistol. Now we switched back to the 124 grain Fiocchi ammunition, which may have just a little harder primer, but we've never had problems with the Fiocchi ammunition not igniting with other firearms that we've used it in. So let's see what happens now. Now what I'm gonna say, guys, is the trigger on the Archon is metal. We've been shooting this gun a lot this afternoon. The front of the gun, this, this area is very, very hot. The grip's nice and cool, but the trigger is starting to get hot. Now with polymer handguns like the Glock, you're never gonna feel that heat coming down through the trigger. I'm starting to feel that heat come down through the trigger on the, uh, the Type B here. First magazine, no issues. Okay, so that's the first time we've got through two magazines of the Fiocchi with no light primer strikes. It's a good sign. All right, so something may be going on that maybe I got some oil into the striker channel. I lubed everything up. Maybe that's what happened. We've worked that oil out or something, but we're gonna take a look at some of the spent cases and compare them to the Federal ammunition. But it looks like the Archon's working okay now with the Fiocchi. This is the 17 round magazine out of the original Strike One pistol. As you can see, it fits and locks in. It just sticks down just a little bit further. And we'll just check function here really quick, which will be handy if you pick one of these up and you can still find these magazines on the market. Nice backup spare magazines should you decide to carry the Type B. This is Fiocchi ammunition. Okay, all Fiocchi and no more light primer strikes. Now guys, what I did do, take a look at this here really quick. These six rounds were fired out of the Archon. And then these on the outside were fired from my Walther carry pistol. And I just wanted to compare the primer marks and the primer divots. Now it looks like the primer marks are slightly more shallow, but there's also more primer flow back into the striker channel on the stuff fired through the Archon, you have a more pronounced primer strike from the Walther on the outside cartridges. So I uh, can't really tell if it's hitting more solidly. We just see more primer flow back into the striker channel on the Archon than we did with the Walther. Now, one thing that we learned with the 509, which was kind of surprising, but it shouldn't have been because the Glock 22 was notorious for this issue. 
And this is a rather relatively small light. Uh, this is an Olight, it's one of their little PL minis. Uh, these, this, we have two of these. I bought these when they had a 40% off sale. Olight's going around giving free lights to every YouTube channel and giving 10% kickbacks on codes and stuff like that. And we're not doing that. So there's no code for this light to get you know extra money for us here at the channel. We purchased these lights. And so we are testing them. It's a little bit lighter than the light that we put on the 509, but it caused the 509 to malfunction. We took the light off, gun ran fine, put the light on. We had some problems, especially when running suppressed. Got some more of the Fiocchi mag uh, ammunition in the standard Archon magazine. And let's see how the Archon responds to having a light attached to its accessory rail there. Now I will say guys, we're just loading magazines and shooting. We're not taking much of a break. This trigger is getting almost to the point of being uncomfortably hot after about 200 and so rounds fired. Got some more Fiocchi ammunition. Haven't had any more light primer strikes as of late. Okay. Now we're moving over to the federal ammo. I will say I like the way that this gun shoots a lot. It's just a very flat shooting little pistol. Let me show you guys one of the cool features about the, the Type B that sets it apart from the Strike 1. So you notice that right now the gun's set up for right hand mag release. So I want to switch it over to left handed use. I take my magazine, I insert it into the magazine well backwards, you'll notice <laughs> that the mag release button just falls right out. Now I'm just going to flip the gun over, insert the mag release back into the gun, pull the magazine out, and now I have left hand mag release. I'm going to put it back, make sure you catch it, falls out. You can tell which end's which. See how it's kind of shaped like an hourglass? This is the side that you're going to depress to release the magazine, the longest side. So I put it back in and pull the magazine out. And now I have my right hand mag release back in place. Have to admit, that's kind of cool. How practical is it? How much you're going to use it? Probably not very much, but for you lefties out there, you're going to like it. Because of the locking mechanism and how it works, the barrel doesn't drop necessarily like a browning action does. The locking piece drops, and so the barrel stays moving in a, in a rearward motion in line. It's said that it does not require the assistance of a Nielsen device to run a suppressor. That means no booster. I don't know that for sure, it's what they say, but soon there should be threaded barrels on the market. Either, either the third party is going to do it, but Archon says that they will have threaded barrels available shortly. Another feature that they're working on that should be available sometime in the near future would be an optics cut slide. Now we're going to do some shooting with our challenge targets down there. These are really affordable uh, targets that uh, simulate a plate rack, but you just bolt them onto any uh, piece of wood there, set them up with cinder blocks, and you can either use them with springs where they automatically reset, or you can take the springs out and they'll just fall over and stay over. We have them with the springs inserted, and now we're just going to do a little bit of shooting here on the plates going back and forth. There's our 17 round magazine. We're getting this gun hot, guys. I'm actually smelling oil or something burning. And there's a light primer strike. Let's see if we got a round in there. And we did, it was all the way in battery, 
and this time it was with the Federal. This is a good 250 rounds with no issues, maybe 300 rounds with no issues. And I think even with a massive flinch on my part, that's concerning. That is concerning. <laughs> that trigger, guys, is so stinking hot, it's almost impossible to hold on to at this point. Got one more magazine. It's actually painful right now to actually shoot the thing. We've got pretty close to 800 rounds to the gun now. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop shooting. The gun is extremely hot. That light primer strike, I saved the round. I don't know which, ow, dang it, I burned my finger just touching the slide. Let's go ahead and, I'm pretty sure it'll set it off the second time. This is that light strike we got. All right, guys, I think we're gonna wrap things up this afternoon. Uh, we've fired 800 rounds to the gun, we've had uh, six light primer strikes total in about 800 rounds and we thought we had gotten through that we had fired tons of ammunition of multiple different flavors well two different types of flavors uh, and we weren't having any issues then here we were shooting this last sequence and the gun's just too hot to hold on to it's not the polymer that's a problem if you touch the the slide it's extremely hot right now and that face of the trigger is just uh, i'm gonna have a callus there because it's actually really really hot but we got a light primer strike almost 800 rounds in. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's not oil in the striker channel, there's something going on. And that time we had it with the Federal and not the Fiocchi. So it's not just a matter of the Fiocchi being, you know, heavily primed or having a thick primer um, casing. So that's concerning. We're gonna do more shooting with this pistol. We actually have a second one at Copper we may take out and do some shooting with and see if it has the same issue. Then we're gonna contact Archon and find out what's going on because we are uh, set up to be a stocking dealer, but if these guns are gonna be a problem, we're not going to retail them at copper. It's just our rules here. If we uh, don't trust the gun, we won't carry it. Uh, we'll give them a chance to fix it. Maybe it's just something goofy with the first production run. I don't know. I'm going to jump on the internet as soon as I finish up this video and find out if anybody else is having light primer strikes or sporadic light primer strikes. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, you can do that by becoming a Patreon supporter. There's a link down below. We are 100% viewer supported. We take no money from Olight. We take no money from Archon or any firearms manufacturers. We are your advocate. We do that so that we can be 100% honest in our assessment of firearms and their accessories. So if you want to support us in our mission, please become a Patreon supporter. Also, another great way to support us is to swing by ForgeFromFreedom.com. Check out the Mac collection. Again, there is a link down below. You can pick up one of these banned socialism shirts if you want. And guys, yes, it's a joke if you want. If you want. <laughs> it's a joke, kind of, sort of. I got some guys that got all riled up about me being anti-socialist and trying to silence socialists. And how could you be a libertarian? Relax, guys. It's just a t-shirt. You can support us, though, by picking one up. Also, swing by and check us out at Copper Custom, which is coppercustom.com. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for 10 years of support. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Is that damn trigger hot or what? That is hot. <laughs> that is a hot trigger. I mean, we... we I have... don't know if, if they can see my finger, but I burnt the snot out of my finger on that trigger. Yeah. We fired a lot of ammo. It is. I was trying to focus on the, uh, the ground down there. But right there... I got a nice little callus forming from that metal trigger. I think they should make it out of polymer. Just uh, a little feedback from the field, guys. If you're gonna shoot all day long, that metal trigger so